Just weeks after the Italian city of Venice suffered its worst flooding in more than 50 years, water levels rose once again yesterday. The high tide was expected to peak at 130 centimeters but was a little lower than expected, reaching 120 centimeters at 7.30 a.m., at which point 28% of the city was submerged underwater. According to forecasts, the high tide uh, in Venice will be reaching the estimated 130 centimeters peak today. After floods that kept Venice submerged underwater in November, recovery efforts have been underway to restore the city and help the residents return to normalcy. The damage from last month's floods is estimated to be around 1 billion euros. Venice attracts more than 25 million tourists each year and the effects of mass tourism on the fragile lagoon environment fueling decades-long debate on the future of the city. In an effort to preserve and nurture wildlife, Pakistan's wildlife officials have released hundreds of green sea baby turtles into the Arabian Sea. The effort that started decades back has proved to be a good step when it comes to reviving the turtle population. The turtles were released by Pakistan's wildlife officials. Every year in the months of October and November, hundreds of turtles appear at the beaches of Karachi's Hawks Bay and Sanskrit to lay eggs. The Sindh Wildlife Department then looks after the eggs till the time they hatch. Later, they are released to their own habitat. Cyclonic storms in the Arabian Sea disrupted many nesting sites this time. Although it uh, did affect the process, but the officials confirmed that they still have managed to release almost 5,000 baby turtles this year. On to South Sudan now, where since 2004, the United Nations has destroyed over a million explosive devices, including landmines and cluster munitions, scattered across the country from decades of conflict. The UN Mine Action Service says these unexploded devices pose a grave threat to farmers and villagers. Our next report, getting you more details. Palamina Eli and her friend Mary Moyoyo Joseph were collecting tall grass near the village a year ago to cover the roof of her home when Joseph stepped on a landmine. I had no idea there was something there. I only remember a dull sound like dim, and the next thing I knew I was on the ground and in terrible pain. Mary Joseph is one of more than 3,500 people in South Sudan who have lost limbs or injured by unexploded ordinance since the demining began 15 years ago, and nearly 1,400 have been killed. The United Nations Service, ANMAS, has now reduced the explosive threat down to 27 square kilometers of land across South Sudan. But that represents progress of the 1,800 minefields recorded. There are only 184 left to clear along with 128 non-cluster mission strikes. But it is time consuming. The minimum metal mines have minimum metal in them, which means we have to investigate every single piece of metal as we're clearing the ground. So it's a slow process. The average deminer clears 20 square meters in a day. That's an area of four meters by five meters, not much bigger than a single room. Despite the challenge, Animas expects to clear all remaining minefields, cluster munition strikes, and battlefields within six years by 2026. However, the chairperson of South Sudan's National Mine Action Agency says to accomplish that, villagers need to play a part when they find any suspected explosives. The mine action business is not only for those who are working in it. It's a collective responsibility for the, the nationals, citizens, have to report whatever they see Two, one. One. 
Animes cautions that even after all the known minefields and cluster strike areas and battlefields are cleared in South Sudan, it could take years, even decades, to find and eliminate remnants of yet undiscovered explosive. But every landmine or explosive they destroy means one less possible casualty from this deadly legacy of conflict. Sheila Pony for VOA News, Magui County, South Sudan.